Hello viewers, so I'm real sorry this took so long to get up, but finals week is actually eating me alive. Anyways, this is going to be our first Let's Draw video, but it's also going to be a bit different than we would usually do for one of these, specifically because this is going to be a lot more of an information tutorial. So that's going to be a lot more lecture based and a lot more theories rather than tutorial walkthroughs or a time lapse of a drawing. So the topic of the day is lines, specifically line exercises and line confidence and why we practice them and why we love them. Also to keep up with the theme of us improving with those of you at home, I'll be breaking my own tradition of doing line exercises on paper and following along with my tablet. This is going to be pretty dry and technical, I'll be honest, but I'll try to be as concise as possible and this is, stu uh, this is still stuff that's good to know. So without further ado, let's go! So the first thing I want to talk about are the kinds of lines I usually see from a new artist. If you look to the right, you can see the examples I drew for you guys. The first one is the kind of line that you want. It's drawn quickly in one smooth motion. Next to that is a sketchy line, which is usually what happens when artists draw in short lines, particularly if you draw from your wrist. The last one I put down is what I like to call the wobble. I usually see this in traditional art when the artist pushes their drawing utensil down too hard, either because they're trying to control the line too much or because they're doing it deliberately. Either way, when you press down too hard, your muscles tense and they tremble, and that's what gives it the kind of line quality. If you do digital, you'll also realize that this is a lot more common than if you do it traditionally, and it's a lot uh, harder to change because of the learning curve. You can always compensate that with getting a program with a stabilization system. Uh, the most common ones I know are Paint Tool Sci, uh, the free version or what people usually use if they don't want to pay for a Sci is Krita and the stabilization tool will definitely help with the wobbly line. Next, what we're going to talk about is drawing from the shoulders. There's a few reasons why drawing from the shoulder is a better option than drawing from the wrist. One of which is that it's a lot easier to do long fluid lines if you use the ball joints in your shoulder than in your wrist. This is because by using your shoulder, you're drawing with your whole arm, which gives you a larger range of motion. This is particularly handy when you're drawing environments or perspective, since long lines are your best friends when eyeballing perspective. But the reason why we stress this so much is that by drawing from your shoulder, not only will you increase your line fluidity and line confidence, which we will talk about in a bit, but it will also regulate possible wrist injury. The main one being carpal tunnel syndrome, which is caused by the repetitive motion of your wrist. Unfortunately, there is no cure for it, and if it gets bad enough, you will need surgery. So please take care of yourself if you're going to be drawing a lot. Now, finally, we're going to talk about line fluidity and line confidence. Line fluidity is how natural your lines are and how they flow. For example, the curve of your shoulder or a sphere or even the cranium of your skull. Those are all spherical. Other things would be like hills or waves. Things with an arc would rely on line fluidity, basically. Now, line confidence just means how confident you are in laying down your lines. Usually, an artist who's been drawing a long time will be able to conceptualize where they want their lines to go. This definitely comes from a lot of practice and a lot of muscle memory, but it's not hard to do if you keep working on it and striving to better your art. So I did this comparison as an example between clean lines and sketchy lines. I intentionally exaggerated the difference for this demonstration, but the gap that you experience may vary. A good way to help you conceptualize is definitely by doing quick thumbnails, and that will also help you cut down on the erasing, the reworking, and possibly overworking your paper. Some slight differences when you're doing line exercises on paper versus if you do them on a tablet. When you're working on paper, you want to be at a higher vantage point than your canvas or paper. This is just so your arm has the range of motion to move freely without getting too tense. Another important thing is to rotate your paper. Uh, your arm will want to move in a certain direction and it's much easier to work with your body than against it. There's also some slight differences when you're doing line exercises on paper versus if you're doing it on tablet. When you're working on paper, you want to be at a higher vantage point than your canvas or your paper. This is so that your arm has a range of motion to move freely without getting too tense. Another important thing is to rotate your paper. Your arm will want to move in a certain direction and it's much easier to work with your body than against it. 
Meanwhile, if you work digitally, you want to set up your space comfortably, and how you would do that would largely depend on you. So just experiment with it and see what feels good. I usually place my tablet to the right of my computer or on my lap since I'm right-handed. My arm would naturally want to list to the right. And just like if you're working with paper, please rotate your canvas when lining your work. Different software have different hotkeys, so just play around with your software. Lastly, some common tips are just to push your lines and pull your circles. All that means is that when you draw a line, you want to push your arm away from your body while pulling the arcs of the circle towards you. Now onto the actual exercises. The first one is parallel lines. This works as a precision exercise and works well when doing cityscape or perspective art. Next is what I like to call the ladder. Uh, you just put down two parallel lines and then put dots on both sides and try to connect them the best you can. This makes it a good exercise for hand-eye coordination. Also remember to turn your canvas. It's real helpful. Like the ladder, uh, the star is also a coordination exercise. You just put down a dot and then you try to hit it with your line. So when you're done, it looks like a star. The three-point curve is actually my personal favorite exercise. This helps with line fluidity and what you want to do is put down three dots and connect them in one fast motion. It's okay if you don't hit it on the very go. Even after a few times, you might still miss a few, but honestly, that's fine. But for this particular exercise, you really don't want to go too slow because if you do, you just start to wobble. Just start at one point and then work to the second one. When you get to the second one, speed up a bit until you hit the last dot. You can always make it more complicated by adding additional dots, but you can just start with three. That's definitely the most basic. And then circles. You hate them, but you need them. Do your best and practice. And after a while, you can always warp them and it makes a nice cylinder. The last one is the three ellipses on a stick. All you do for that is you draw three ellipses and then you eyeball the center of the three and you try to hit the center to all of them. This is yet another precision exercise, but it also sets you up to draw some hella cylinders, which are real nice for perspective work. And finally, for ending words, if you're still here, thank you! And please stay for a few seconds more. So I have a few more videos planned out for you guys, but I'd also like to know what you guys would be interested in. Like, would you guys want more digital tutorials, traditional tutorials, time-lapse videos, art supply reviews? What other topics do you guys want to hear about or want to be discussed? Along with that, if you guys have any tutorials you found online by another artist, you could always link us in the comments below, but we would very much like it if you also provided the link and the artist so we can credit them properly. Anyways, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more of us, hit the subscribe button. Bye bye!